Good morning, folks. We're watching some gorgeous plasma filament dances on the northeastern solar polar crown. We've got news all over today, but we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star were very quiet. We've got a small coronal hole system turning through center longitudes on the south. There are absolutely no sunspots or solar flares here in the waning months of the solar cycle minimum, and the solar wind is calming too. On the right side of the chart, you should see everything trying to level out the last day, including up top in blue. Phi angle magnetism of the solar wind, its variability in days before is what caused the brief geomagnetic instabilities that are calming back this morning as the phi angle calms down. Quick earthquake note. Earth expects a magnitude 7 event every 20 days or so, but it's been 89 days since the last one. The longer the wait, the stronger we've seen the return bounce back. Just an FYI. Taking a peek at the polar vortices, south retightened up for one last spin cycle before breaking down for the southern summer, their warming event didn't last long, and up north the system is slowly but surely coming together. Of course, it is the jet streams that are the most influential aspect of the northern hemisphere weather right now. This dip over the U.S. is solid and not exactly forecast to disappear over the weekend. The snowstorms and cold that it has brought have obliterated records, and that is expected to continue as the system moves east. A couple tangential climate notes. Polystyrene in the environment for thousands of years, not if exposed to sunlight, in which case they are finding decades to a century is plenty of time to return the plastic to its degraded component form. A terrific article on carbon uptake during the last ice age, they say that it's due to plankton eating more, growing bigger dying and falling to the sea floor. Well, please recall that after every model suggested that plankton and chlorophyll and others would suffer under more CO2 conditions in the sea, the real world observations have found the opposite. They are eating more and growing larger, just like the lead in to the carbon sequestration of the last ice age described in this study. Let's go next to CERN, sort of. We're actually focusing on a new study done at Florida State. After they thought they saw pentacork particles at CERN, it was high time to high detail study the proton-photon collisions they said that generated them. Unfortunately, they ran it and ran it at FSU and didn't see the pentacork, calling into question the CERN results. But also, examining these photon-proton interactions at more detail than ever before. Up next, the court accuses the Milky Way of two counts of larceny. First, there is the snatching of material from the Large Magellanic Cloud, even snatching up entire chunks that qualify as satellite galaxies. In earnest, the magnetic clouds are relatively tied to the system, and the defense will argue you can't steal from yourself. The second count is on the interstellar and nearby extragalactic gas and dust deposits from supernova, stellar ignition jets, etc. They say it's not able to fully escape either, but is pulled back down into the plane of the system to have more dynamic interactions. Sticking with the Milky Way, nice piece about how they hope the James Webb Telescope will be able to peer deeper than ever before into the heart of the galaxy. They have been able to notice bright interior stars, slingshotting around a point, but that's about as much as we know. Webb is touted as being a titanic upgrade from Hubble and Spitzer, last of which took this image here of the galactic infrared. Last but not least, a short, succinct, and poignant climate letter sent by scientists to the UN, laying out not only a simple argument, but urging a continuation of their stance against the climate activists, which they started last month. Folks, if you need to get caught up on the climate, or on cosmology, or on catastrophism, we've got both your long and short films linked right below this video in the description box. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.